go. I'm live, 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 live. This is what I look like on Sunday morning when I'm exhausted. So let's get the eyes on because then I can see what the hell I'm doing. Mute the computer. Wait for Facebook to do its thing. Da, 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 da. I know there's people here and I know I'm live. Oh, there I am. Look at that. Funny. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. As Facebook has decided to tell the world that I am going live, say good morning. Don't be rude. Don't be shy. Good morning, Mary. It's Mary Francis. I love that. I love people who've got two first names as their first name. It's very southern in my world. I'm a Yankee. It is what it is. Good morning. How is everybody this morning? It is chilly here in the Northeast, I have to tell you. It's like 49 degrees outside. So uh, I'm donning the long sleeve. Um, the days are a little bit warmer. I'd say a little bit warmer, but but it's a nice fall crisp day here in the Northeast. Um, I want to say it's been hitting about and eh, you know in between the 70, 70 to eighty degree mark uh, during the day. We get it nice and toasty warm, and then all of a sudden it drops like a hot pocket by the end of the day. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's definitely fall. It's happy fall. I can finally put all my autumn stuff out and not have people judge. No judging. No judging. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. So you, you're in Jersey, so you get it. It's a little bit crispy. It's a little bit on the crispy side. Uh, there's eight people on, and there's only you and I talking, Mary. I tell you, people need to say hello. People need to say hello. Or I'm just not going to do sass anymore. I'm kidding. Too many of you guys ask for it and request it. So give it another minute or so. Hopefully people will start chiming in and say hello. Hello, Mary. Hello, Billy. Hi, Billy. Billy, it, okay, I have to tell you a quick funny story. So Billy is my um, online secretary because <laughs> definitely is there when I need somebody to put up a link or something when somebody asks me a question. So shout out to Billy this morning because <laughs> let me tell you, he's been right on the ball with helping me because I have been so busy. So Shout out to Billy this morning. That, it was funny the other day. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, good morning. Give it a thumbs up because if you like it, it helps share it too. Um, so like the status. Also, um, oh, you're camping? Ooh, camping in the fall. That sounds fun. Um, up at the top of your feed um or where this is make sure you hit the three little dots and save the video um and so that this way you can save it to watch it for later because lord knows i throw a lot of information at you useless or helpful or not i don't know it's information nonetheless hello ariel that's why i'm here <laughs> my online secretary let me tell you best secretary in the house right there Good morning, James. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning from Texas. Ooh, I would love to know how to say your name. Is it Nelta? Nela? Nita? I am never going to say that name right, ever, until you actually say it to me, probably in your very thick southern accent. In a travel trailer, fireplace going. I have the heat going at my feet, plus I have the dogs. So, anyway, let's get started this fine, fine, crisp morning here in the Northeast. This is Sunday Morning Sass, and I'm Nikki for those who live in a bubble. Um, I've been doing this now for over, oh my gosh, I'm pushing almost three months. Um, Nelta. Would it be pr pronounced as Neil? No, Nel. Nelta? Hmm. I love it. I love different names. Because um, I have such an ordinary name, but yet an unordinary spelling. Hmm. Anywho, so let's get right at it. Um, there's just some things I want to chit chat about. Um, if you missed the live with the Stan and Amy crew, yay, got it right. Um, if you missed their live, they talked about the different things that they've got coming in. They've got some really cool ornaments that are coming in on Stan's side. Um, 
Amy uh, got a new printer for those who missed out on her printer tutorial. Um, so she got a new printer. She also talked about the new stuff that she's got coming in. Um, they also talked about the give back that all of the graphic designers over in the graphic transfer group, um, they're giving a design away for you to use um, towards fundraising needs for the Carolinas. Um, so, for instance, it's a lot of Carolina strong, so it's not like you could use it for another state. Um, they're going to be uploading those into one of the files or units. I'm not sure where that's exactly going. I can't remember, to be honest with you, because it's Sunday and it's Sunday sass. Um, so, they have that. Um, so make sure you keep up on that, ask questions because I know it's going to be there soon. Um, so there's that. Let me just move this away. There we go. So I can see now. Um, but like I said, they introduced some new stuff in the, in their live if you've missed it. So, um, there's that. So everybody is gearing up. I, sorry, I've been pretty much MIA. I've been very quiet. Um, and it's not just because I'm bored out of my mind talking to you wonderful people. It's because I'm busy. Um, just like all of you, I run my business. Uh, I, well, most of you, I would say I run my business from my home. I do this full time and, uh, I've geared up right into fundraising season and literally once mid August hits, I don't stop until, January where I then hibernate for the next month because I'm exhausted. Um, and if you're like me or you want to be in that sense where you are just so busy, you're exhausted. Um, then, uh, I'm going to do some quick things about how to push a little bit more of your product, things that I'm learning along the way. And I've been at this now for three years. Um, and I'm still learning. Um, so Make sure you just check out all of our groups that we have because there's lots to offer. I'm pretty active in the graphics group and in our um, sub and more with answering all the questions that you newbies have. And if I don't know the answer, I try to figure it out or I tag an admin who would. Um, so that's how that rolls. So today we're going to talk about somebody asked me to press a puzzle. Um, so I'm going to press a puzzle. Puzzles are really easy. They're like stupidly easy. Um, so don't worry about that. I don't want you to freak out. I've got a lots of puzzles and with every Sunday sass, I always at least screw up at least one item. So just pr be prepared for that um, because it's live and why not? I mean, God forbid I actually do it right on the first try. Um, anywho, you're going to have to deal with the hat because this is what no hair doing looks like on a Sunday morning. <laughs> um, I'm also going to piece together um, a burp cloth because that's a huge issue with anybody who's got any printer that will only go eight and a half by 14 or eight and a half by 11, um, depending on what your printer is. So that's been a huge, seems to be a common theme. And I'm going to piece together a burp cloth specifically because I have a Sawgrass 400 um, and I just found out that I'm going to be getting a Sawgrass 800. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slightly excited. Um, you have to be excited for me or jealous, whichever. I don't care. Um, good morning, Jessica. Jessica's another one who does videos in our group. She's uh, pretty rock awesome. Um, Anyway, so we're going to piece together the burp cloth. I'm going to show you some different tricks and what you, there's a, a gadget that you really need to buy in order to do proper piecing. I know I've been doing it by hand, but when I'm here in the shop and it's just me, I tend to use this object a lot. I know you can get other ones and I'm going to make sure that you go into your scrapbooking section of your world um, in any one of those places. And I'll show you because it makes for easy cutting. So it's a cutter basically. Um, but before we get started, I'm also going to do a bib too. It's all going to be the same design. So there's a product that I have that's sitting in my, that I, I use, but I've never posted about it. I get it from JDS and, um, I never post about it. And why? Well, because they're big and they're wonky. Um, and when you're going to ask, so in my baby line that I have, so when I do my baby stuff, I have the blanket, the onesie, the burp cloth. Let's see. Whoops. As it opens up. Hold on. So in the baby line, I have a blanket, onesie, burp cloth, bib, hat. Um, 
sometimes I'll throw in a hair bow if it's for little ones, you know, that are on a headband. Those are all in my baby line. But there's something else that's in my baby line that I've never actually talked about. Um, and that's because I'm not exactly sure how to talk about it, I guess. So, in your car, um, when you give it as a gift, there are these things called sunscreens. So it's wrapped up like this, okay? Believe it or not, JDS sells these. And you can sublimate on them. And I know you're thinking, what in the world? There you go. Hello, my little friend. So you can actually sublimate on these. And we're going to sublimate an image on it today. So it has, obviously, see-through. But you can put the image on it. Um, and then it comes with two little clips, um, suction clips that you put it up into your window. Um, but these are... I'm really good at folding these at least, okay? These are something that I also include in my baby package, and it always goes with the theme of what I'm also doing um, in with the baby package. So I know people are like, eh. well, here's the thing. So I don't supplement the whole thing. I just put an image on in the middle, and I don't ever really talk about it. Why? Because it's absolutely massive. It's 14 it's 14 by 18 so they're huge so people often ask well I can't press it on my press I can't print it with my printer no you press a design in the middle you don't have to press the whole thing and I wouldn't even encourage it because it's a whole lot of ink for something that's see-through so I would definitely just do something that is adorable obviously I mean because it's not adorable um, but I would do something that would work for you and I'm going to make a, an image. I'm going to print that off while we're chit-chatting here this morning. And this way you guys can see how I do it. It's not, it's, it's not an exact science. I don't have my comments up right now, so I have no idea what you're saying to me. So give me one second. Um, I just want to pull this up so I can make what I need to make for you guys. And um, show you. Do, 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 do. Give me one second. Mm, ba -ba -bum, bum, bum, bum. It says glitter, I think. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, how you can make different things. So, copy this because I'm working in a different program. I work in lots of different programs. Everybody's asked me, what program am I working in? Well, well, I can't even believe I'm going to say this. I am now a three-program girl. Why? Because each program offers me different needs. So when I started out, I was in I was in Inkscape. Inkscape is a free program, which is basically um, your baby steps for Corel Draw and Photoshop. Um, more so Corel Draw than Photoshop. So we'll even take Photoshop out of the equation. But Inkscape teaches you the basics. It teaches you because the stuff that I learned in Inkscape helped me to understand Corel Draw a lot easier. Um, which was, honest to God, huge for me. Um, for the fact that I could manipulate things a little bit easier. So people often ask, why, you know, how I do what I do, so to speak. Um, and that's how I've learned. Now, people also ask, how do you find great tutorials on this stuff? All right. So I am an easy peasy kind of girl. All right, I want to keep it simple, and that's how I keep it simple. So when you're looking up something for a tutorial on something, I literally, this morning, because I had to refresh my brain on how to crop an Inkscape, because a lot of you guys use Inkscape. Um, and that's probably my fault that you all use Inkscape. Um, so I try to say, okay, how am I going to crop? So I had to go in, and I had to figure out how in the world am I going to crop an Inkscape. So I had to go in, in YouTube, the university, because that's where we all go back to school. In the university, we pretty much put in there how to crop in Inkscape. Literally type out the, the function you want to do um, because it works. That's how it works. Let me see. Whoops. Let me see. There we go. Why didn't that um, hold? I'm trying to multitask, and you can tell right now that multitasking is not my area of expertise at the moment. Why? I have no idea. I just don't know. It's Sunday, guys, and I'm just having a life. <laughs> I got my new computer fixed because guess what? Corel Draw sucks the life out of your computer. Um, when you have not a lot of gigs and memory and all that other happy stuff. Um, so yeah. Anywho, we're going to make this a thing 
get this all set. I'm going to open up my comments so you guys can ask your questions. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to get this all pasted in and I'll show you what I made. Yep, I shall. Um, give me one second. I apologize. Um, oh, stop being silly. When your program doesn't want to do what you want it to do. That's just how that works. Um, drives me absolutely insane when your program doesn't want it to do what you want it to do. And you're like, just do it already. I have no time for this. Perfect. Alright, I'm going to flip things around so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into my comments. I'm glad you're laughing at me, Morgan. Okay. Alright. So let me look at my comments and see what we've got going on. Good morning, Christina. Christina is one of our designers. She's down in the comments right now. Um, do you do designs for dog shirts? I can. I mean, a lot of our designers do, actually. If you go into the graphics and transfers group, just type that as a question. You're looking for designs for dog shirts. Um, and one of the designers will get back to you. There's a bunch of us, and we all have a lot of different files in our arsenal um, of things to make. So by all means, pose that in our graphics and, and um, transfers group and see who bites. Because I know there's people who have dog transfers in there. So, or animal transfers, I should say. All right, so back to what we were talking about this morning um, is this contraption here I'm going to press for you this morning. Um, you don't do the whole thing. You just do an image on it. I'm going to turn my camera around so that you can see it. Um, and what I'm working on for it, this is why you don't need to do it big. Literally print it out as big as your paper is. So, for instance, my paper is 8.5 by 14, so that's what I'm going to print it out as. Why? Because it doesn't need to be anything bigger than that it's just a sunscreen and putting ink on it isn't going to make it any more there's a word and i'm totally going to screw this up but we're going to go with it anyway it's not going to make your screen any darker like it's not going to help filter out more sun it by it's just literally coloring the threads that are in there so don't think that it's going to if you do a full-on print it's going to make this sunscreen darker it's not I'm just going to throw it out there. You're just adding a pretty design to a sunscreen. There you go. That's it in a nutshell. Um, so I don't want you to get all hung up on the fact that this is, you know, oh, it's got to be. No, no, sorry, it does not. Um, just so that you're well aware of the situation. Um, let's shrink my image down so where I can get it to where you can see it on my page. And we're going to flip my camera around. Come on, flip. Of course my camera doesn't want to work. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I got a new holder, by the way. Okay. So I have this image right here. Move stuff out of the way. Get it closer. So this is the image. I'm working a lot with this image because I'm absolutely obsessed with this image. Okay, so I make this a really kind of funky one um, just because it's what I wanted to do. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to print this lovely piece of information out and get it all printed. I'm working in Corel Draw this morning. Um, and I'm also working in Inkscape because I'm going to show you how this got pieced into this. For those who use sawgrass, or, or well, I say sawgrass. So, actually, let's get to it. While this is printing, so when you have an image in here, all right, you can crop, all right, and that's how you crop. And you have to know what the dimensions are of this particular piece. Well, the only way you're going to know the dimensions of what that particular piece is, because if you have a sawgrass 400 or anything that can only print an 8.5 by 14, you have issues. All right, so here we go. So this size right here, all right, from here to here, um, and this is one of my templates. So here's um, is 10.372. I don't really care about this part of it because I know I'm going to print it in um, landscape. So this I'm good with. I now need to cut it in three pieces. Well, to cut it, it's going to be, my template is 20.73. Um, 
and I only know that is because that's the template that Stan has and it does have a slight bleed because these are 20 actually these peanut things are 20 inches long almost to the exact inch so a little bit is extra for a bleed so don't get all hung up out of it now I'm gonna say something really quick about this design I noticed it this morning because you know so normally when I do my peanut shaped ones you only just have to print two of these and one of those but um, what I didn't think about was that you see this snowflake right here there's not one up here so I had to print this one too so I had to print three separate pieces but normally in my designs I say normally to look at the design to the side okay don't blame this on me I don't want to hear about it so um, it's just cute so print this normally you would only have to print two of these and then one of those I say normally but just look at the design you might have to do the one two three all right so I needed to know how to clip this all right so I'm gonna bring in my file and I'm doing this in Inkscape right now I'll show you how to do it in Corel draw I'm still learning Corel draw but I'm a little bit more fluent in this particular information um, do, 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 do. just because this is what I'm used to working in and as I get better and better at it myself, um, I'm going to turn my comments on so I can see what you guys are doing. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm going to use the image that I'm already working in so you can see how I did it. And there's a clipping feature on Inkscape that most people don't know about. And I say most people, I just say our new people. New people don't realize that you can clip a design in Inkscape. And the reason, like I said, the reason I use Inkscape is because this is like the little kid sister of the design, okay, design world, I guess, and it's free, and, you know, when you're first learning, you don't want to pay them a lot. All right, so I know that this whole thing right here is 2.75. All right, so I get my little handy-dandy calculator out because why? I need to know, let's move this over. So 20.75 divided by, okay, three, because I need to know what size to make this box. All right, so do I, this is the number, 6.916, clear that out, okay. So when you're doing this, for those who live in a bubble, I make a bunch of squares. And there's a reason for making a bunch of squares, just so you guys know. Um, because I want to see how it's going to cut. So I want to make sure that this is the 6.196. And then I literally will you bring this right to the edge. Okay, right to the edge. And then I duplicate my box because there's going to be three of these boxes. And I literally connect them. I'm focus this out a little bit. All right. And I'm going to duplicate it again. Whoopsies. Made that move. That's okay. Now you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is essentially, and you want to line it up too, just so you know. Make sure it's all lined up. And there's another feature for that too in Inkscape. So that you can line it all up. Um, so if you take this little jobby, you see how it now cuts it into three pieces. I want to make sure, if you need to know, there's this button up here, okay, and it brings up this panel. And this panel centers your entire design. Oops, I didn't want to do that one. Okay, so now it's all centered. All right. So you need to know how to do this. Let's move this bad boy over here because that's already clipped. All right. You want to... I duplicate this three times. This particular one. Ugh, why is it doing that? I hate when it does that. That's the only downfall with Inkscape. Um, let's copy. Ugh. Anywho, it's just being stupid right now. Um, what you have to do in order for this to work properly is take out this, oops, not this one. Really? today. Technology and I are not getting along lately. I had to have my computer fixed. Um, so I want to get rid of these because you want to crop it. If you want to know how to crop, this is how we're going to crop. 
Okay. So once you have your three, you've duplicated it three times in your Inkscape. Um, and just because it's... I'm trying to do this live, so I do apologize, people, for my lack of this. Okay. I'm not... I am no Marvin by any stretch. Um... Oh, there it is. Okay, so you have the three, right? You have to highlight the whole thing, all right, in order for this to work. You go up to Object, and you go to Clip, and you go to Set. And now it's clipped that piece that you need. So then you go and you print that piece off, okay? Now, remember, we have to do three of these, all right? So now let's say I want to do the middle section, all right? I want to take the top piece off and the bottom piece off. I want to highlight the whole thing, clip, set, okay? Now, if I were to line these bad boys up, and if I did a good job, they will be picture perfect. All right, now it's slightly askew, but you're gonna line it up correctly. All right, and this is a bleed, so don't even really worry about this. This is a slight bleed, as long as you shift it to where, and I'm going to leave a little gap so you can see where I cut it. Well, you're going to back that up. And then you would do it again, move, delete this part and move down and get your third one. So then you end up with da, 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 this. Okay. So however big you need to print it for your needs, you just create the box. You have to create a box the size of whatever it is. And then you use that, you highlight the whole thing, and then you hit clip and set. And it now has clipped the design. All right, and then you just print it off. It's really that simple in Inkscape. Now in Corel, because I'm still learning Corel and I really suck at this, um, you can see what I've been working on. Um, this took me a little bit more to figure out and it was a whole copy, paste, and clip thing. I'm gonna tweak, I'm, or I'm gonna ask Marvin to maybe do a better tutorial on this one because I am not really good in Corel Draw. I've managed to figure it out, but I am not about to tell you how to do it because I'm pretty sure there's probably an easier way to do this. I'm going to almost guarantee it. Um, I love the penguins. We're totally doing the penguins today. I'm obsessed. Let's get up here. Let me see. See, this is what I get to see. I get to see all of you. See? There you go. You're welcome. Now you know what I'm looking at. Let's switch this over, shall we? All right. Let's move this around. I got a new holder for my my gadgets because, you know, I need new ones. All right, so let's get to this. Let's wander, shall we? Let's take this off the cute little handy dandy thing. Ooh. Let's grab the paper. I have a puzzle. I have everything else I need. Oh, I need my little handy dandy this thingy. And I'll give you all the product information. At the end of our, when I go, when I stop being live, I will give you all of the information that you need for where to buy said items. Okay. Boing! All right. So, first things first, let's get this sucker on here. And there we go. Much better. I'm getting so much better at this. People are just laughing at me. All right. So people often ask, first, before we get here, because I have it sitting on my desk, um, in the graphics and transfers group, there's a lot of questions about um, whether or not our stuff, God, this is crooked, um, whether or not our stuff, what it looks like live, basically. You know, we show mock-ups for you guys to use. Um, and what does it look like when it's pressed? All right, here's what I can tell you. Shirts are going to press differently than substrates <clears throat> when it comes to what it looks like on a, a mock-up versus what it looks like in real life. Um, because they're not typically with a white background, all right? They're typically with a, um, you know, a color. I mean, yes, you could put on a shirt, but it's, it's harder to show it in a mock-up. At least it's just to give you a general idea. So if you're using one of our mock-ups that we have provided for you um, to use for your clients, here's what I'm going to say to you. You need to make sure that if it's a clothing mock-up or anything really, I think you need to put the disclaimer and the disclaimer is this. These are just mock-ups. The actual printed image may vary slightly. Just put that as your disclaimer because it's going to change on most things. <clears throat> So people have asked, 
This is what the cutting board um, looks like. Let me turn my, all right. So this is the cutting board. So it's pretty much true to, true to color, I should say, for the, um, from my mock-up, okay? Shirts are gonna vary. That's just the nature of the beast. But I did press this just to show because there was a lot of questions, especially with any of our mock-ups, what they look like and how do they really press. Um, our stuff presses pretty good, okay? We've got some pretty talented artists in there who know what the hell they're doing. So keep that in mind. Um, dun, 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 dun. All right. So with that said, let's get some let's get some work done, shall we? All right. So in my shop, I'm gonna move this in one second. Move all my papers. We're gonna get this all down. You're gonna see less of me and more of this. Okay. Let's get the comments out of the way. Oh, stop. Thank you. Okay. So I have this thing. It's a good old fashioned teacher paper cutter. I suggest, this came from Office Max, by the way, I would suggest that if you're going to do proper piecing with any one of your designs, you really need to invest in a paper cutter, whether it's the ones from your scrapbooking, but you need to have them large. If you're getting some rinky dink one, you've wasted your money. Really get a large one um, because this is going to be huge, all right? Um, for what is needed to be, needs to happen. Um, give me one second. Come on, you. Ooh. Um, so what you need to do is this. Invest in a good paper cutter because as much as we would like to say we can cut a straight line, I can tell you right now, no, we can't. And I could draw a straight line. I absolutely can draw a straight line. Cutting it's a whole other ballgame. Um, but I tend to make sure that your lines are straight. It makes for proper piecing. Okay. So today, 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 and I'm going to show you why, where the hell are my scissors? Um, why you need to be able to have a large enough. And I'm going to show you right now. Okay. Thankfully my design isn't absolutely huge. So I can do this. Okay. So this particular board, all right, is I want to say, well, it's got to be bigger than 14 inches because it's 14 inch paper. So it's probably a 16 inch or this is probably 12 inches. Sorry, this is 14 inch paper. So I am not concerned with this side. So I'm going to just literally come up. I don't care that it's not straight. Not on these where I need it straight is right there. Okay. So for proper piecing. Oh. Uh, Go, go, gadget. There we go. Um, go, go, gadget. You want to make sure that when you're lining this up, and I have to get a different one just because I have decided this. If you have the clear, see like this, they have ones that are clear that you slide it in and you can actually see where the line is. That is the one you want, okay? Invest in that one. This one was given to me, so I tend to try to use this as much because I am all about trying to get it free, to be honest with you, because... This business is expensive, all right? So my, that's my next my next little goal is to, and make sure you have it all lined up where you need it to be and pray like hell that you got it right. Let's see how well I did. Ooh, spot on. Okay, so now I have it so it's a nice clean edge. There's no little tiny ripples in it um, so that when I go to line up this piece, they are going to match up perfectly, which will help with piecing it together because honest to true, you don't want these to be, you know, it's going to hide your lines a lot easier. If you try to do this by hand, this is where it all goes to crap real quick. Okay, so you want to make sure sure that your lines are lining up right where you want them. And that needs to be there a little bit more. Okay, so watch. So this is, that's the top. Let me do the bottom. And make sure, you, I mean, you'll know because you're going to go line up this design 
and you're going to try to line it up and whatnot. So like I said, get a paper cutter that has the clear edge so you can see your line. It is worth the investment and is worth your aggravation to have the proper tools in your hands. Like I said, I'm using this one, but it's because this is what I have. Um, so watch. I'm just going to line this up just for the sake of lining it up. Um, oh, wrong one. Okay, so when I go to line this up, literally, I am going to have proper alignment and then there's going to be less of the chance for me to see that seam because there won't be any wonky lines. Okay, that's huge. I don't care how you crop your object to fit into your stuff. You really just want a crisp, clean line. If you're going to start doing this piecing, because we're creating some pretty awesome designs over on graphics, um, and these are for Stan's Coney Island bids, our burp cloths, by the way. You see this? So then there is absolutely going to be no gap. I don't want a gap. I don't want a little tiny line, because you know what? Uh, most of my designs for these are pretty forgiving, because I created them that way. I'm going to kind of bend down here. I created the designs that way to be a little bit more forgiving because you know what? Here's the thing. We're not perfect, but I don't want to see a huge gap either. So make sure you have crisp, clean lines. If you're going to make an investment and a $25 cutter, by all means, make that your investment. All right. Um, just because it's so much easier. Let's see. Give me one. Hold the thought. One quick second. Y'all, I totally did. Stand like, you piece it together great. I know. I know. And we're going to bring over my iPad and get onto the group because then I can see your your comments a little bit easier. Thank you. Um, It's definitely a little bit... Um, let me get into my Facebook. Give me one second, people. Just because I need to get into the live so I can see your comments far easier than I can on my phone uh, because you know you gotta love technology so, da, 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 and there I am there we go let me turn it down alright um yes so Stan's posting where you can get the bib, the burp cloths okay they are amazing. And I want to show you what a full bleed with proper cutting looks like just because I don't want you to be afraid of it. Okay. I don't care that you have a, a, a you can only print in eight and a half by 14. I want to give you the tools that allow you to have these designs, some of the full bleed designs and not be scared of it. Now, disclaimer, I know nothing about silhouette, nothing. I don't even know what the heck you use it for. Okay. I know that people use it, but I use Corel, Photoshop, and Inkscape. Those are my go-to. Um, and I can show you how to do those things. Um, I know that, here's my thing, and this is only for people who are watching, if you're paying attention. <laughs> um, yeah, Paige, Paige and I talk every night. Paige is like, she's my go-to person. I will get a random message from Paige, by the way. But anyway, here's what I'm going to do. If you have, Okay, and you're still new at this. If you have purchased the designs for the burp cloth in the in from my page, I need you to message me if you have a you know the the availability for printing. I said should say this. If you're gonna print the designs, I will send you the clipped copies of them. But I'm gonna go and look and make sure you purchased it. To be honest with you, you have to purchase the bib cloth. Okay, you have to purchase the design in order for me to send you the uh, more workable version, this version. If you want me to send you this version, you had to have already purchased it. So that's, I'm not just going to hand it out there. You got to purchase the design. Um, because if I'm going to put the time and effort into it, so do you. Um, and that's how that's going to roll. So hold on one second. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, my son was asking if his girlfriend could go apple picking with us later. Hashtag mom of teenagers. Um, 
So I'm gonna cut my last part of my design and, and we're gonna piece. Everything is with this damn penguin, by the way. Why? Because I'm obsessed with it. All right, I'm gonna just cut this real quick. You guys don't need to see that tutorial again because that's just how it goes. And all right. So let's move my handy dandy cutter out of the way. I'm gonna show you how this should have just done what it should have done. All right. Yes. So let's be honest for a second. I have a 15 inch press. Okay. So my 15 inch press is not going to be able to accommodate all of this. Okay. Um, let's see. I cut it just a little bit wonky just because I was being a screwball. Make sure I get myself all lined up. Okay. So what you're going to do is you want to leave a little bit of your paper on either side here. And this is why, because I tape it together. Okay. So you're going to wonder how I'm going to do this. Watch. There's a bleed. So I need to get in there because I didn't give myself enough corner because, you know what, I kind of had an idiot moment. All right. So that side's all taped. And then I want to come up here and I want to make sure that this guy, there is a little bit of a white edge just because I didn't clip it completely 100% because you know what? I'm going to get one of those cutters because you know what? Tired eyes do not do well. And when, you know what? Because also too, you know, when you're doing this, you're doing this late at night. You're not doing this during the day. Okay, let's be honest and real for two seconds. You're just not. All right. A lot of people are got two jobs and kids and everything else. All right. So I barely tacked that. Flip this over. Okay. And I'm going to literally give some tape on that side. And I'm going to literally give a little bit of tape on that side so that they stay together and be done with it. Okay. Now, this is bigger than my press. This whole design is. It's 20 inches long, okay? So, I want to make sure that I can do this. And with proper piecing, you should be able to, okay? So, it's going to take two pressings. Because unless you have a 20-inch press, which I do, but I need to show you on a 15, okay? This design is 14. This part of the design is 14 inches, all right? So with this being a 14 inch, um, and it's pieced wrong. Sons of bitches. Sorry, I said that out loud. <laughs> Glad I noticed. Dumbass. Yep. And this is what Dumbass 101 looks like. I'm just gonna peel this off. And here's why you're like, how did you know? Because there's a... There's a snowflake there, and there's not a snowflake there. And this is what happens when you rush. Okay, let's try this again. Because I'm part idiot today, apparently. There we go. That makes a little more sense to my brain. I told you it would be a Sunday morning sass if I didn't screw something up. And you're giggling, and I'm not even paying attention to the comments. Um, did you make the shirt you have on? No, I did not. Um... I did not make this shirt, actually. So anyway, let's piece this back together again. So now that it's pieced together properly. All right. See, and that's how you catch yourself. Because you got to look at it and make sure all the pieces of your puzzle are correct. All right. I could tape the back. Now, let's talk about this. Two seconds. Let me move this cutter out of the way because I don't currently need this. don't want me to get cut. So, lint roll. I hate lint rolling. I'm just going to tell you this right now. But, if I'm going to lint roll, I would like to be able to have a reusable lint, lint roller. So far, this little gadget has been doing a wonderful job. Okay? And it tells you to go in a certain direction. So you go in a certain direction, 
and you pick it all up and I have now lint rolled. I absolutely can't stand it. All right, it doesn't matter which end you start on as long as you start on an end. All right, we're going to put this guy, make sure that your bleed is all the way around, okay, because that's highly important. Okay, so, and if you notice, there is a nice bleed on these, okay? So if you're wondering, so here, I'm gonna do this because I will take these all together um, because I'm gonna do them all together. So you want this to be, don't worry about my little cut because that's not gonna matter in my world. Um, because Stan was amazing and gave us a great bleed line um, on these. So that kind of helps us people. Um, Stan and Amy are really good about making sure we get a good bleed around the edge. Um, just because of, you know what? That's just life. So now I'm going to tape these all. Whoops. Let's make sure it's all where it needs to be. And it is a struggle. Don't get me wrong. If you think I do this and this is easy, you guys are up a tree. You guys are crazy. All right. So there you go. All right. Nope, I didn't get on my tape. So I want to make sure that when you do this, you literally center it. You got to play with it, guys. Okay? Because there is a bleed. These are slightly wonky because it's fabric. Okay, there isn't a piece of fabric on this face of this earth that is completely 100% square and 100% straight. Okay, it just doesn't happen that way. And if you want to argue with me over it, by all means, I've been a seamstress way too long to understand this. Um, it's the nature of the beast. Okay, they are, it's just because it's fabric. When you heat up fabric, it stretches, believe it or not. So, Keep that in mind. It's because you've relaxed the natural fibers or even just the fibers in the fabric and that changes the whole landscape of things. So keep that in mind. And here's another thing. This is why you also pre-press. Okay, so I am gonna pre-press this, um, but I just wanted to show you that after you've pieced it together, what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna go throw this on my pre-press right now so that I can pre-press this sucker because you want it to lay fat because if you notice, there's lots of bleed as there should be. So let me do a quick pre-press. They told while I pre-press my cloth. Alright. So I'm going to give it a quick pre-press. And on one side. And then I'm going to flip it around because I need two. Because my press is only 15 inches wide. All right, so now I've got a happy pre-press. Now, it's gonna take out all the wrinkles, it's gonna take out everything I don't want, and more. And you literally, have, see, it, this is why you have to pre-press, because it changes the shape. Now, let's say this. Let's say you don't like the way it's laying, because it is fabric, flip it. See if it lays better, okay? Because here's the thing. When Stan makes these, he makes it based on whatever direction he happened to be having it in. And because it's fabric, it's going to change, okay? So I'm going to try to do this as best as I possibly can to make sure that we have it all where it needs to be, where you can shift it ever so slightly. So this is why I tape. I do not spray because I would like to come around here and make sure that all of my pieces are on my board. Okay, so get right to that edge. I want to press it down in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. I'm in a rare form. I've had way too much coffee. Um, okay, so it's been lint rolled, it's been pre pressed. We're gonna do two pressings on this bad boy. Um, and you got to make sure you put down your paper. So let's get the press. Let's get this press all started. Hold on one second. Let me answer some questions. Whoops. 
Oh, stop. Okay. When you're piecing together, are you overlapping at all or just edge to edge? Edge to edge. Okay. You don't want to overlap. And if you do, it's ever so slightly in the overlap. I mean, ever so slightly because when you overlap, it actually creates more of a line. So you really want to piece it together. That's why you want to get a cutter. Invest in the cutter because you're going to get straight edges so that when you piece something together, you don't have to worry about overlapping. Okay, that's huge. So you want to make sure that this is what you're doing. All right, keep that in mind. Um, good morning, late. Ah, you're not late. You're never late. All right, let's see. All right, so let's get the... I have my paper because we're going to do two of these. Okay. You got to do two pressings. That's just how it goes. Um, because unless you have a huge press, it ain't going to happen. All right. So whatever you decide now, here's what I try to do when I'm pressing. If I'm going to press, I try not to put my line. Okay. There we go. I could press it right here, okay? Because I'm not gonna take this whole thing off. Now, you can get a board, the Luan board, so that literally this would stay just like this, okay? So, whoops. So the Luan board would work. Another um, option is, where the heck is it? You can use cardboard, believe it or not. Um, but anyway, so you wanna do this, get it all set, make sure there's my edge. There's my edge. There's the edge. I want this to kind of hang off this piece right here because this is the one piece. You can do it to where you can put it, but we know this is 14 inches. So unfortunately, this bottom half is going to literally hang off the edge. All right. So I don't want this to slide because it's going to. So I want to tape this down. And that's my bottom paper. Just just to tape it down to this, okay? That helps this. See, now all of a sudden it has stopped sliding. So I have the Teflon. Hear me. Teflon is to protect my bottom spongy platen thing, okay? But the paper, you have to put on it. Why? Because this has got to bleed, and it's going to go onto this Teflon where it's going to sit there, and it's going to sit there like a bad headache. Okay, and you're not going to see it until you go to press something inevitably white. Okay, and then and then you're going to see that. Okay, it's going to be like heartburn. Um, so you don't want to have, you need to have the paper. Paper absorbs. I'm using parchment paper because I had a whole bunch of it cut, so I'm just going to keep using it until I get to my butcher paper. The butcher paper or parchment paper, yes, you can use. Okay, why? Because you can. Because they're going to absorb um, you can even use regular printer paper, all right? I don't care what you use as long as it's plain, all right? It has no coating on it. It absorbs that ink so it doesn't get onto your Teflon, which will not leave a bad remnant for the next project, okay? Now, always use butcher paper or parchment paper or your paper of your choice onto the top. All right, I'm going to slide this down just to make sure that I'm in, Okay. And I want to move this up just ever so slightly because I'm going to know by the time this is done where this is pressed. And down she goes. All right. So there you go. So there we've started pressing the first half of these burp cloths. You saw how I've pieced it together with using a straight edge cutter. You, absolutely. That's one of those things that's your go-to. That's going to help also too that straight edge cutter for all of your other substrates. Um, obviously not round, but anything that you need to cut that's a square. Or if you're cutting multiple mug designs or printed out mug designs, you literally can just chop them up and it makes it so much easier. Then you can at least, when you do your mug designs, have a straight line for when you're lining it up onto your mug. Um, so, you know, that cutter is gonna come in handy for a lot of different things, not just using it on burp cloths. If you're piecing together designs, you really need to have that in your arsenal. And if you don't, then you're only setting yourself up for disaster. And I'm setting myself up for a whole bunch of emails and messages coming my way with, why do I have a gap? Well, did you hand cut it? Because I know when I hand cut, it doesn't work. 
Okay, so, and I do, I, and, and you know what? Because I don't think of it. This was a conversation I had with Stan the other day is I sometimes just don't think of it. Okay, so you got to stop and you got to think of it. All right. Now, the first half is done. I'm going to pick up my tape. Put that on the side because I can reuse it. And I'm going to flip this around. Sorry, I forgot to move it. My bad. Shoot me later. Okay. So now I know I can see this, right? I want to get my paper so that it's stuck again. Um, I'm going to put some more paper down. Give me one second. I've got two multitasking projects going on here. Okay. So I know that this is going to get pressed again, this, this edge. Okay. But I don't necessarily want a lot of it being pressed. I want a little, not a lot. Okay. Um, because I can see that there's a white edge. If I pick this up, I can see that there's a white edge. Okay. So I want to give it a little bit more love in that section because that's an edge. All right. So what I want to do is, because of where I've got this right now, because I don't need the, uh, I don't need any police coming after me, because God forbid I didn't put down paper. All right. So slide this up just a touch, get that there, and hold it here. This is a lot harder than it looks, I need to be honest with you. So guess what? She's getting taped. Nothing like a little tape to last your lifetime. Tape is cheap. Okay. I'm going to tape this down because I'm about to move my hands and I need this sucker to stay. Okay. So I need this to stay for me so I don't get myself burnt. So I want to tape this to my undercarriage sheet here. Okay. Look. See? Look, Ma. No hands. Okay. If you taped it down, you're going to do a good job. Okay, so I taped down to my Teflon sheet that's wrapped around. We're going to drop it like it's hot, because it is, and we're going to keep right on going. And we're going to, you know, do not use regular tape. Sorry, that just totally came out the wrong way. No, you use a special heat tape, um, and the heat tape is made for sublimation, and you get it from one of the major sublimation people. Do you use Teflon on the bottom and nothing else? No, 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 no. Not in sublimation. You put your Teflon on to protect that pad, and then you got to put paper over it, whether it be copy paper, plain, butcher paper, which is the most used and probably the least expensive, and parchment paper. That's fine, too. You can put it on that. Um, so there's that part of it. I don't know why that can't get rid of that. Um, so you never, no, 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 no. Do not put it without that because if you put your substrate down with on Teflon, it's going to leave an invisible kind of residue that you're not even going to see until you press something like a shirt that's white and all of a sudden you're going to see it again. And so, you know, that's why I said it's a, like a bad heartburn that keeps repeating on you, unfortunately. Um, here's a quick thing, though, too, and here's something that I did is Stan, um, hold on one second. We're going to pull this off together because it isn't a Sunday sass where I haven't screwed up at least one or two designs because why I'm talking in multifunctioning. So I'm going to pull this all off. Give me one second. I want to show you something because here's the thing. This is why you have to protect your paper. Ha, ha, ha. I love when this happens. I love it. I know you're going to laugh at me, but I do love when this happens because it allows proof. The proof is in the pudding. Okay. This is why you put paper down right here. Now, if that sat on my Teflon sheet, I might not see it. Okay, because it's just literally floating on our, my Teflon sheet waiting for that next pressing. And now you have literally got blue on everything. And I mean, it's not just one side. Okay, you throw this away. You can't even reuse it. So don't even think about it. Right? Throw it away. No more, Satan. Um, I don't know if you can use Fraser paper. To be honest with you, I've never used it. But there you go. Um, all right. Let's pull this off together because Lord knows what I've done. 
I do a bunch of these, but I don't typically do them live. So I get to pay attention. And this is why none of you guys do these live. Why? Because um, you can pay attention to what the hell you're doing. All right? So let's see how well. Okay, and I'm going to show you what happened. And it's a, pro it's a me problem, not a, not a thing problem, and it's because I was talking. So I will show you what happened. Um, I'll show you the right side, and then I'll show you the other side, and I'll show you, we're going to press it again, how I probably would have done it, probably more so, is I would have pieced it together differently. All right. So this, uh, where's my little thingy? Watch. Why am I doing this? Because it helps get all the wrinkles out. Okay. So, let's get this a little bit. I'm going to bring this up so I can show you what happened. All right. And it's only because I moved my paper. And it was really a me problem, just me doing it. So, I'll show you what the proper piecing side was. And then I'll show you why, when you're trying to multitask, what happens. And why these are a, if you're going to piece, you got to not be on live. Okay? And that's okay. All right. So, there's the... Now, it looks, it looks like it's... It's just because of where the, the line was. There's actually no line there. Um, it's just how I've got it. I'm trying to get it so you see it. Um, because once I put it, it's really, it's just how this fabric works. Okay. But there really is no line. Okay. Now, where I screwed this up. My son's standing here laughing at me. Okay, so this is because I wasn't paying attention when I was doing, so when I was piecing, the, when I was putting it on the heat press, this was a heat press issue, this wasn't a piecing issue. So this is totally a heat press issue, just because this is how I, you know, needed to do it. So, um, but you're not going to be doing these live and trying to show 63 people how to do this. But, I gotta be honest, he still presses beautifully, and he's gorgeous. Okay, he's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous. So there's that. Now we're going to move on to, let's see, what else do I have here? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I would never use these if you've got, mm, all right, disclaimer. If I can throw my two cents worth into my sass, here's my disclaimer for the day. Don't you don't use anything that has um, a shiny side on it. I, I, I know you're probably going, well, that's what I use. Well, honey, you can use that. Fine. But I'm just not agreeing to it. There you go. There's my two cents worth. Where did I find my shirt that I'm wearing? <laughs> it's funny. Everybody's commenting about my shirt. Um... No, I did not make my shirt. Although this looks like a total Ashley Dodd design. Um, it's not. Uh, I got it at Walmart. And I got it in the junior section because I've lost a lot of weight and I can actually fit into it and it was kind of cute. So that's where I got it. All right, we're gonna do a puzzle. A puzzle. So you take it out of its cute little handy dandy contraption, okay? And I keep the cardboard on the back, and I'll tell you why. Because it keeps those pieces together. Because this is not the easiest thing to do. Can't even believe I'm going to do this live. Lord God. So, here's the thing. I put this over the top of my puzzle. It's not lined up. It's just so I can flip the damn thing. Okay? And not lose a piece. So, I have this. And I press it with my cardboard. And there's a reason for that, because again, I don't want the pieces to go flying everywhere. Okay. And I also don't want to be taping to the back of my puzzle. I want to be taping to the back of my backing. Okay. We're going to get her all lined up. Mm -hmm. You do these at medium pressure for 356 degrees for, I think it's like 45 seconds. I think I have to go double check, but... We're going to go put this on the press. This is one of Amy's puzzles. Um, if you're looking for puzzles, you can get those at hailbound.com. 
I want to fix my pressure because you don't want a lot of pressure on these. All right. So there's my pressure. I put my paper down, which I will show you my 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 puzzle burrito. There's my puzzle burrito. Okay. So I have the paper down. This, 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 and we're going to press, and she's pressing. Okay. We're gonna let that go. And um, actually, I think it's 120 seconds now that I think about it. I'm going to have to go back and look. Um, but I'm going to give me one second. Yes, it's 356 degrees for 120 seconds. For those who didn't hear me, it's 356 degrees for 120 seconds. So my temperature is a little higher right now um, just because I didn't let it cool down enough. Um, so I'm going to see how that works out just because it is a little bit higher. And then who knows? I might have totally completely screwed this up. So here you go. Again, Sunday sass without me screwing up something isn't a Sunday sass. So let's talk while this. Um, why isn't this working? There we go. Let me get out of these. Hold on one second, people. I've got all these little chat windows that people need to just stop talking. All right. Did you have many epic fails? Oh, please, have you watched a Sunday morning sass? I have an epic fail every Sunday. Those are my epic fails because they're always when somebody else is watching. And it's never when, um, you know, I'm sitting here actually doing my damn job. So, let's see how I did. Oh, my God, I'm in love. Okay, so, let's get this over here. Pull this off the press. Um, because it's hot. Get it on here. Okay. Again, there's the bleed. This is why you use paper. Okay. I'm going to get in here, snip this off. Get in here and snip this off so that I can flip this around. O M G. You guys really want to see how gorgeous that is? Oh my god, I can't even believe you. I and I if I wasn't so obsessed with this damn design. So I do it without any of it falling apart. Look how pretty. Yeah, I got a Walmart. Walmart a junior section. That's right. So look at him. I mean, let me see if I can get it closer. And look at all the detail work that's, and it pressed gorgeous in those lines. So if you haven't got the puzzles, Joe, can you hand me all the puzzles that are sitting next to you? Uh, to your left, buddy. Right by the printer. This is amazing. So this is also something great. Um, this is great for those people who want to do um, gender reveals or you want to do it you know, for anything. So, I mean, honestly, it's adorable. So, Hailbound, talk to Amy, because look what else she has. We have different shapes. We have smaller ones. That's the larger one, and you can actually do that on your sawgrass um, in one pressing. So, I mean, that's a win. Here's, you know, so they come in all sorts of shapes, and they're absolutely adorable and totally worth it. Um, a great thing is, is that you can get a little carrying bag um there's different little places i bet you stan has a little carrying bag that you could buy that you can put those puzzle pieces in and then you can sublimate the image on the front of those little tiny carrying bags um i know he's getting in some so i'm thinking right great idea for a gender reveal totally um so there you go can you add hold on selling price um I don't know what they cost off the top of my head. Hmm. Get on Hellbound and you can look at them. Um, and then I can tell you. <laughs> um, let's see. You can add a name to the design to personalize it before. It yes, absolutely. I mean, that's with anything. So totally in love. And this is why I press with the back is so that it's all stays all together. Um, absolutely in love with this right now. It, it's just, it's got a nice glossy finish. They're gorgeous. 
pull it all apart when it's done, but take a picture of your design and you can press it into a little tiny canvas bag. Um, I know Stan's getting other bags because they would work perfect as a puzzle bag. Um, just FYI. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna press the, this big jalopy, all right? This is the screen that we were talking about. Here's the design. I'm literally just gonna center it. I'm gonna put down some new paper because I don't want blue marks everywhere. All right. You do, you can tape it down. Um, you really want firm pressure on these. The reason being you want firm pressure is there's a wire, um, and I'll show you in two seconds. Um, there's a wire edge uh, around it. So that can be, you want to kind of work with that part of it. And oh my God, Becky. Um, where did I oh, there, there. Finally ran out of a t-shirt to paper stash that I had going. All right, I want this to be a firm pressure. All right, so. You put on your press, firm pressure, the whole nine yards, and I'll show you what it looks like in about two seconds. What about a photo? You could do photos on that. I did photos. Where's my, hold. I did a photo one. Um, where's my photo? I'm not sure off the top of my head where my photo puzzle one is, but I did one. The photos come out absolutely amazing. Um, if I find it, I'll post it. But I did a photo one as a sample to see how it pressed, and it came out absolutely gorgeous. Yes, top and bottom paper, always. Use it always. Not sure I've done what, who is it? Sarah. Where did Sarah reply? Sarah said something. I don't know what she said. Hold on. Do you have a video for pressing the big blankets from Stan? Not yet. Um, I will be pressing those blankets probably on next Sunday SAS. I have to make one, so I'm gonna hold off. And so next Sunday SAS, I'm gonna press one of his, one, well, I'm going to press the baby blanket. I'm not pressing one of the 50 by 70 ones just because I only do corners on those because they're absolutely massive. So I do not press all the way around on the 50 by 70 blankets that I have from Stan. I press on the baby blankets and those I will be pressing next Sunday. Um, because if it isn't Sunday, it doesn't need to press. I'm sorry. It's an ongoing joke in my house. Um, all right. So this is all done. This is all and it really presses pretty because again I don't even know if you can see it let me try to put some paper behind it so that you can see there you go so that's what the image looks like okay because you're going to see me through it so that's the image but here's what it looks like when it's not it still presses pretty Okay, so this is one of those screen things, right? So now I've made a collection for my babies. Um, this is one of the great ones to put in the collection. Um, and literally, take it, twist. There we go. So you're going to flip and, and twist. So, yep. This is one of those screen. This is a screen that you put in the windows um, of the car windows. And they come with, they come from JDS, and they come with the little suction cups that you suction cup to the window so it protects baby. So, I'll tell you what my grandmother uses it for. She puts it on a casserole. When we're at a picnic, and she puts her name on it, 
and you lay it on a dish so that the flies don't get into it. So you can also use it as that too. Um, yes. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, you'll be able to go back and watch it, Lee. That's adorable. I have several of these and have never done anything with them. There you go. Do it. Any chance you will be splitting your new graphic bundles. I'm going to be buying a cutting board design and need a towel design. I'm not doing pot holders or oven mitts. I can. Yes, I can split those. Um, I haven't thought about it, to be honest with you. Um, but when you buy the bundle, just so you know, you get three separate files. So the towel design is actually in there. And the, the bonus part is, is you can mix and match or whatever. So, um, I have pressed a picture of a family on the puzzle, then take the puzzle apart for the gift. And then the family sits and puts a puzzle. Yeah. The puzzles are just great, especially with Christmas coming around. So there's the thing you have Christmas coming and we're always looking for just some unique and different ideas that we can actually pose out to our clients. So on next week's SAS, I can tell you what I'm already working on just because I've really thought about it. Um, and that is next week I'm going to do one of Stan's blankets, but I'm also going to work on stuff for the men. I'm going to be ordering in some stuff that you can have for stocking stuffers for men. I'm also going to do some stocking stuffer stuff from Amy's stuff for next week and what she can do. So next week's going to be about stocking stuffers, ideas for men um, for Christmas, because I see we struggle. We can, us women, we can handle kids. We can do that. And, we, you know, us ladies know that, you know, we love all the kitchenware, cute stuff, but what do we do for the guy in our life? So that's going to be a next Sunday sass is the baby blanket and just items for men. Um, and we're going to work on those items. And again, some stocking stuffers, because we need to start literally now posting those out. Um, I'm hoping that our graphic designers in the group, um, that are paying attention right now are hopefully going to jump on that same bandwagon and start producing some designs made specifically for men. So I'm going to be posing that to my group so we can post those designs out for you with different ideas so that you have some more ideas over on our graphics design group. Um, because I think that's where we struggle. Um, will you be doing the, the slates? Oh, I do slates all the time. Um, I can do slates. Um, if you want me to, I guess. Um, Yes, hot selling Christmas gift lists is awesome. Yes, I think that needs to be the next one because we will now be hitting close to October 1st and now our ball is rolling in our world. Um, let's keep it PG, Nikki. Huh? Oh, you're being such a dork, San. Lord God, all things men. Dear, he's so bold. <sighs> I had to think about what he's saying. He was, him and Todd get me every time. Um, I requested to be in the design group and hadn't been added yet. All right, I'll check it out and see what we've got going on. Um, men items are in big demand, so that would be a great idea. Awesome. I'm glad that it'll be a great idea. I think that that's a huge thing. I think it's a missed market in our world because, again, it's all about the kids and about housewares. I mean, seriously, we have nothing. But I can tell you all the stuff that we do have that you can buy for men and how you can sublimate on them and what we can put on them. I'm going to do a whole men's line. Um... Yes, I realize that all my guy stuff is booze related. Yes. And you need to get into the guys like, you know, all the hobbies that men like to do. Hunting, fishing, um, gaming. I know that sounds funny, but you know what? Maybe you have a gamer in your life. Um, the sports. Here's the thing. Disclaimer, y'all will not see anything that's copyrighted. So there will just be, if it's a sports related, it will not be with any team that, um, so that way we can keep it, keep it clean. Um, and keep me from being in an orange jumpsuit or stripes at any given time. Because this fat girl does not look good in stripes or orange. So, Joe, what's the time, dude? Woohoo! I'm almost done. All right. So, <laughs> Graphics designs, I will post everything up in the links up above of everything that I've pressed. Um, and we'll go from there. Gaming is a great idea. See, I do have a few of them. So if you have any questions, go back and reread. You'll see the tutorial. Um, make sure that when you're doing your burp cloths, you don't go live and you don't have any distractions because you really need to make sure you press it good. Here's also another tip is practice, practice, practice. Always buy a couple extra things so that you can practice and learn how to do it correctly. Also make sure that you have, um, a good cutter, a good paper cutter, because that, if you're going to be in the piecing world, is going to be a huge, huge difference. Um, 
in making piecing so much easier on you, me, and everybody else. Um, so for next week's sass, we're going to do um, one of Stan's baby blankets. I'm going to do some of Amy's um, keychain holders that she has that you can use with the chapstick and everything else and different ideas. And I'm also going to do all things men. Um where we talk about the different designs that we can have for the men in our life and the different products that we can offer for them. And it's not just a tie or a mug. So until then, this has been the quickest Sunday sass that I've ever done in my entire life. But you know what? This girl wants to go apple picking with her children. So that's where I'm off to. So until then, this has been Sunday Morning Sass and Nikki. I'll see you guys real soon. Bye.